All right, so, and um, so did your parents grow up in Geneva? And... They did, they grew up in Geneva and my father uh, went into the army when he was 17 years old. When they came out, when he came out, and they got married and moved to Seneca Falls, New York. And that's where they raised all of their children. Thirteen children were born to my mother and father. Two of them were born here in Portsmouth. My younger sister Karen and myself we were born here in Portsmouth. So the others were born in Seneca Falls, New York. Do you know where your parents' parents came from? Or did they also grow up in New York? That my, my father was uh, from um, Geneva, New York. Mm -hmm. And then my father was from Auburn, mm -hmm. Auburn, New York. Mm -hmm. And my mother uh, was from uh, Geneva. Mm -hmm. And their parents, where did they come from? Their parents, uh, their parents were in Auburn. How are you and your, how would you say that your parents and you are similar to each other? How would I say, I'm sorry. How are your parents and you similar? Like what traits did you get from them? I think um, my father was um, a very strong personality. Um, my mother was strong in a silent way. Uh, I think um, the combination of the two was really uh, marvelous because they complemented each other with their different strengths, which my father um, was uh, very verbal and uh, loved uh, being engaged with people. And my mother was a lot more, um, she was quieter. She got the job done, but she was very quiet about how she how she handled things in life. So did they have a good relationship? Fabulous relationship. <laughs> and they raised 13 fabulous kids. And we were, we were friends, family, and friends of one another. Uh, out of the 13 children, I'm the, um, the 12th. Mm. So they were a lot of years between few of my sisters and myself, mm -hmm. but I loved hearing their stories <laughs> and how things were when they were growing up. And they always said that my parents raised two families, because when my younger sister and I were born, um, uh, things were different. Um, and do you know how your parents met? I don't know how they met. I know they were very young. They were both 17 years old. And uh, it wasn't long after they met that he uh, was drafted into the army. So it was one of those old fashioned stories where, <laughs> you know, please wait for me. And she right. did. And mm -hmm. when, when he came back, they, they, uh, they got engaged and married. Mm -hmm. And what, when did you move to Portsmouth? I was born here, mm -hmm. and my sister uh, Kitty, Karen, it's her real name, we, we call her Kitty, we, we, the two of us were born here, and my family moved here in um, 1938. What is something that you remember most about your parents? What I remember most about them, mm -hmm. I remember. Um, I remember mostly that they were a team mm -hmm. in whatever they did. When it came to raising the children, um, they. I. I don't recall uh, uh, arguing and 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 hollering in my in the house that I was raised in. Um, we're very civil. And we were taught that um, it was important to, um, to solve your problems, 
to come together and just solve them and, and, and learn how to do that and, and still love each other when the, during the time that you're trying to solve the problem <laughs> because you don't always feel that way because there's differences there. But um, the thing I loved about the way they, that they raised us is that we were, we were a very loving, forgiving family. That got us through a lot as a family. And so what I remember most about them is the way that they, they, they loved and disciplined at the same time. I thought it was phenomenal the way that they were able to do that with 13 kids, you know. And what did they do for work? Of course, my mother didn't work because she had all those children, <laughs> but my father, uh, was a master electrician. From what I understand, of course, like I said, I'm at the end of the family, but I know the story. Uh, when he came to Portsmouth, he came as a uh, master electrician, and there were a lot of um, there was a lot of issues with racism here in Portsmouth, um, and so he he suffered for that and from that in the way that a lot of times he wasn't paid what he should have been paid. I can remember as a young girl, he waiting for a promotion that he was well qualified for that he, he didn't get. And um, so he went on to do well. Uh, he uh, taught at the, um, the New Hampshire Technical Institute it is now. Mm -hmm but it was called something else back then. He taught, he taught the math, the um, algebra, and all of the tough mathematics, and uh, you know, geometry and trigonometry, and, uh, and he spoke um, five different languages. Did your parents have any dreams for you, or hopes for you, for you to accomplish that affected you? My, my parents just wanted us to, um, to choose something in life that would um, allow us to uh, make a living as well as being happy. And they didn't uh, push us a whole lot to, to, um, to lean toward anything in particular. They just felt that whatever it was that we did, we needed to make sure that we could um, uh, you know, afford to, to live comfortably and, mm -hmm. and have fun with it. And I certainly did that mm -hmm. um, because I always wanted to be an entertainer and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, but uh, the rest of them um, got uh, or ended up with, as they used to say, regular jobs. Um, they did well. You know, my brother Harry uh, graduated as a bio chemist from, he actually went to UNH for a while and went to one of the colleges in Boston also. And they all, I mean, there's so many of them, I can't go down the whole, it take too right. long to go down the whole list, but but they all did, did very well with, with their careers. Right. And did your parents support your dream of being an entertainer? My parents supported uh, myself, you mean, being an entertainer? Oh, they loved it, yeah. <laughs> They would come and, and, and see me perform because I was in high school and um, and they closed the show at high school at Portsmouth High School. They mm -hmm. had what they call a minstrel show mm -hmm. there every every year. And um, they changed it from the minstrel show to the clipper shows uh, because of something that I did and that I said, you know, it was very uncomfortable uh, even though they were featuring me at the end of every year, I was singing in front of a group of people in blackface. And that uh, that very last year before I graduated, they stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. Because of you? Because, yeah, yeah. I refused to go out and sing one night. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty gutsy. I, I think I still am. But um, as you grow older, you learn how to how to cultivate it, how, how to make it work for you mm -hmm. without, um, without offending anyone.
But I, I think it was uh, offensive for me to have to walk out there and sing under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And was were your parents musical or anybody else in your family? Yeah, my, my mother played uh, classical piano, but, but just for herself. Mm -hmm. She played um, sometimes during the early afternoon. Sometimes she would play at night after dinner. And we had jam sessions in my house. Mm -hmm. uh, um, my father played bass, upright bass, and my brother played. My brother Tommy played upright bass. My brother Roy sang, and Jean and Lucy, and we had a good time. Uh, people would come from Newburyport and Hampton, and, and we'd ha actually have a jam session in our house. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we lived on um, uh, Maplewood Avenue, that mm -hmm. big house that's on the hill. Mm -hmm. So we had quite a bit of room mm -hmm. there. Um, and do you know what your parents' heritage was and how, you're, and how your parents' parents or grandparents migrated to the U.S.? I understand that my, um, uh, uh, my grandfather's father, Samuel, was from uh, South Carolina, and he migrated from there. Now, it, it goes back a lot further than that, um, but I don't know uh, if I could go back that far. But I do have all of this written down because, uh, like I said, I'm writing a book, and I, I should have called you to get some of these questions, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then I would have I would have been ready to go with them. Mm -hmm. So some of them I don't have uh, all the answers for. Right. Um, I had a meeting with um, Miss Valerie Cunningham. Valerie, yeah. Uh, before I spoke with you, and she told me that your since your father lived in Auburn, he, she told me that before moving to Portsmouth, that he was a part of Harriet Tubman's Sunday School. And she wanted me to ask if that was true. That is true. Yeah, he was a, I, a, a because that she was from that area, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he was he was a part of her Sunday school. He would talk about that quite often. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also heard that your mother was a Republican. Did do you know that if her views changed or if she voted? Um, and, if, and who she voted for, who she supported? My mother was a Republican during the time where um, it, it, it was uh, popular for black people to be Republicans because uh, the Republican Party um, stood for different views mm -hmm. at the time. And my mother belonged to um, uh, uh, my sister Lucy that we just spoke with told me this, a, a Republican women committee and she was very active and so she voted <coughs> excuse me Republican right up until the time that it was no longer um, the thing to do for, for black people because the, the Republican Party's uh, views um, uh, platform started changing mm -hmm. and I don't recall exactly uh, what year that might have been but she did vote Republican during during the time that she was Republican. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know exactly when she switched, but I know that um, she wasn't uh, uh, still alive during the during the Bush years. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she voted Republican right up until the party started tilting. Right. Yeah. And did her views affect yours at all? No, I don't think her views affected mine because um, when my mother passed away, I was already in my 40s and she, um, she had already been democratic for a long time by that mm -hmm. time. So we were all on the same page by that time. So her views as a Republican when she was I, I was probably too young for it to really uh, have affected me. Did your family attend church in Portsmouth? They did. 
when when they came to to Portsmouth, they they made a decision to um, become members of St. John's Episcopal Church, and um, and we went there. The whole family went there. As we got older, um, a few of my sisters started started attending. Uh, the New Hope Baptist Church, where Pastor Hilson was. I loved him. And uh, they uh, went to that church, and I went a couple of times. Um, you know, you go go through these periods, if you will, of, uh, when you're trying to choose the right church, the right religion, the right minister, the right message. And uh, I bounced back and forth a little bit and ended up in the same place. And that's where I go now. And Valerie also told me that your sister Anna won a competition making a World War II she, she made it. She won a competition for an art. Um, uh, uh, she, it was uh, a magazine that posted uh, uh, a picture that you had to draw. I still have that picture when you think of it. I may have sent it to her daughter. Huh. And uh, and she won the competition. Uh, but she didn't go on to do a whole lot with it. Anna uh, went into the army. And, um, and she, right up until she passed away, which was about 14 years ago now, she did a lot of watercolor painting. And, and she'd send each of uh, her sisters and her siblings um, pers uh, um, a personal Christmas card every year in watercolor, which mm -hmm. she did herself. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, did your parents ever tell you what your birth story was? My birth story? Mm -hmm. And what we got? Like, did they ever explain like where, where, what hospital you were born in, if you were oh, born in the hospital? Or... Yes, I was born at Portsmouth Hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, in December, you know, December 12th. And um, there were only three of us that were born in the hospital. All the rest were born uh, with a midwife. And Roy, my brother Roy and Kitty and I were, were actually born in hospitals. Mm -hmm. Kitty and I were born at Portsmouth Hospital. And Roy was born at a hospital in Seneca Falls, New York. Why were the other siblings? Why didn't they? Well, I think they? I think, and back in that era, it wasn't unusual for for women to have their babies at home right. with a midwife. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I believe that's probably why all the rest of them were born at, at home. Mm -hmm. And what was your childhood like in Portsmouth? Sometimes it was very complicated, depending on <clears throat> what age we're talking about. Uh, the very young years were, I think children, when they go to school the first year, can be a little traumatic. Um, because you're being taken away from something that you used to. I was playing with my sister every day, and I had to go to school, but she didn't, and I didn't understand that. So the first year was was uh, lonely. I would put it that way, because you know, back in that day, that era, Portsmouth had some pretty serious racial problems. In my opinion, I felt it, so I can only go by what I felt. And it's, it was difficult to um, engage with other children a lot of times. And when you did, it, you ended up probably uh, becoming the best friends of maybe one or two or three. And and they you stayed that way. The others, it was just part of where our history was. And so the first years were were lonely and um, complicated, and then as I moved into um, you know junior high school, it, it it got better and better when I went to high school. But there weren't very many people of color in Portsmouth at the time until 
I got into high school and then Pease Air Force Base came here and with, a, with that, a lot of black families came with children and Portsmouth High School ended up with more black students because of that. So we, we, and we still didn't intermingle a whole lot. We just, it, it was just, I think, kind of understood, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy going to school at Portsmouth High School? I think I enjoyed it not, I probably would have enjoyed it more if um, there wasn't a reminder of the difference between me and other students. I think that can cause a problem in anybody's young life. You know, dating and, and uh, you know, we had restaurants that you couldn't attend still here in Portsmouth at the time. So it was, um, it was a, a sad, a sad time in a way. But then teenagers always have fun. You find a way to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And we did. Did you have a favorite teacher or someone who influenced you? My, my only uh, favorite teacher actually was my music teacher, who was Mr. Elwell, because he seemed to have had, um, he was, um, he had empathy and understanding, and he, um, he seemed to understand that what I was struggling with as a young black girl, and he paid attention to that. And we had conversations about it. And many years later, uh, we still do occasionally. I'll run into him somewhere and we'll, and we'll talk. Uh, I'll call him on the phone, you know, and we'll have a conversation. But yeah, he was um, an unusual teacher for the time, I thought. Mm -hmm. Can you describe um what your childhood home was like on Maplewood Ave? The, chi the home on, on Maplewood Avenue was almost like a, um, um, a, a, a something out of a, 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 a fairy tale book. It had a, a, a tremendous amount of room to roam, a lot of rooms. Um, and my father seemed to always be in a great mood. I don't know how he pulled that off, to be honest with you, with uh, having to come home to so many children and, and having to deal with so many disappointments that he dealt with. And um, it seemed that he thought his children, I won't say thought, he, his children were his life. You know, he would, um, he had little nicknames for all 13 children. Uh, he loved to tell stories. He loved to sing. And um, the thing I find very unusual about a family that, that large is that it was always, uh, the house was always filled with, um, was peaceful, I'll put it that way. Uh, he uh, made sure he visited every every room in the house that which children were in before he went to bed, and kissed us good night. And uh, we ate together every night, and we ate breakfast together um, on Sunday morning. And during the week, it was busy because everybody was running sc school and to work. But Sunday was uh, a special day. And my mother always, there was always a big breakfast. We always went to Sunday school. We came home for Sunday school. We changed our clothes and went out to play. And at five o'clock, there was a big meal. It was just customary in my family that um, we had a lot of rules and, and, and a lot of love in that house. That, that was, um, that house uh, shaped who I became, I think, because of what went on in the house. There was always um, someone to pay attention to uh, 
any, um, as a teenager, if you came home and you were having problems, or someone in my family picked up on it right away and had a conversation about it. And what was your father's nickname for you? You know what? I, I didn't um, I didn't have one, believe it or not. Uh, and, and my sister Kitty ended up with um, Sam. I don't know how, how she ended up with that name, but but I I, I didn't end up with a with a nickname. And what were some of the rules of your house that you mentioned? That you had to when you came down for 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 breakfast in the morning, you you had to come downstairs. Um, you couldn't come. There was only I think one day in the week where you could come downstairs to the table in your pajamas. All the other days you had to be dressed when you came downstairs and um, uh, and you had to be at the dinner table all at the same time and there was no uh, there was no uh, vulgarity and no nobody hollered at each other in the house um, and we, 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 we did things in pairs you know there was seemed like there was always one sibling for another one. With me, it was Kitty and Roy and myself, and then it was Lucy and 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 Harry and Marjorie, and then uh, there was Francis. You know, so everyone was paired up with someone. And um, what was what stories did you hear growing up about like enslavement and discrimination where you lived? What stories did I hear about it? Yeah. Well, one incident happened at the Wentworth by the Sea. And um, black people weren't allowed to go there and, and have dinner or go there for any reason. And there was the NAACP got involved. And my sister Jane and her husband and um, two other couples went there for dinner one night. It was planned, it was staged, that uh, the whole thing. And uh, they were turned down and um, they were made to allow them to go into the main dining room and eat. And I, I, if I recall correctly, it might have been 1962 or three. And from that point on, I guess they had opened up for people of color to go into the Wentworth by the sea and eat. But that um, incident, I think, really affected my sister Janie, Jane. Um, I don't, you know, you, you, you walk around thinking that you're just, just a normal human being like everybody else, and then something like that happens and it kind of makes you um, re, um, rethink who, who, who they think you are. And, you, that, and I think you also start wondering who your friends really are. You know, it's, it's even going on today and that's what's so hurtful um, is that it seems to have come back. 1960s have come back and um, I think it's very depressing to think that that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. But that, that era, that particular incident um, was one that they talked about at the house quite a bit. That and my father's um, intelligence and not being able to move ahead faster than he did. Um, and then there are a couple of weddings that took place in my family where they were interracial weddings. One of them was written up in the Portsmouth Herald. They called it a, I think they called it a polka dog wedding or something, yeah. But, wow. Yeah. So that was another, another. There were so many of them. You know, getting, it, uh, there were so many incidents. There were more than there should have been for a young person growing up. But in the South, they went through it every day. Can you tell me a little bit about your music career? My music career um, 
started, really started in high school. Uh, back at the shows, the, the mixer shows that I was telling you about. And from that, when I graduated, that's when I, I realized that I wanted to do that as a, um, my career. That um, feeling of going out in front of an audience and having people react to what it was that you just did on the stage. Um, I mean, the standing ovations, I've been so blessed with just standing on the stage and doing a show and walking away from that show just exhilarated with, with what happened before I left. And I've come to know some wonderful people in this business and out because I'm in the business, um, the friendships that I've uh, acquired um, during these years, uh, you just can't put a label on. After high school, what did you end up doing? I went to, I went to Chicago, I went to Los Angeles. Um, in Los Angeles, I, uh, I studied voice. that my sister Marjorie paid for. But I started having some problems vocally. And uh, they said I was not singing properly. And so I went to a private teacher, um, a friend that in Los Angeles found a, a vocal teacher who was tough. And um, she was from the Gilbert and Sullivan School. Uh, I only know her name was uh, Rusty. So, uh, but that's how I started my career. I stayed in Los Angeles for about seven years, and um, then I went on the road. I traveled a lot with different bands, and I met my husband when I came back. We got remarried, and um, I ended up staying right in the area. Yeah. And, and still entertained here, a lot of performances here mm -hmm. until the COVID, until the virus. Thing. And what made you decide you wanted to live in Portsmouth again? I like Portsmouth. Um, I think it's, um, I like the change of the season, so not that you don't have them in other places in, <laughs> in uh, New England, but. But Portsmouth is where I was born and raised, and I think every everyone likes going back home, especially if it feels good here, and it does. Mm -hmm. And what would you say was one of your like biggest accomplishments in your career? In my career singing? Mm -hmm. Well, there was, um, I've been called upon quite often to, um, to schools, to, um, kind of have little master classes to teach the young people um, performance skills, how to, how to react to your audience, how to get them to react to you, how to speak and before them, how to, how to dress, that sort of thing. Um, so, so that along with the summer program, uh, about seven or eight years ago, hired me every summer for uh, less fortunate kids, if you will, um, that had nowhere to go in the summertime. So there were five, five teachers uh, and one director that headed up these classes and, uh, for the summer that mm -hmm. taught them how to um, sing in harmony, how to, you know, how to dance, how to... Um, play an instrument, and at the end of the summer, uh, we put a concert together where they invited parents and friends and, and uh, performed for them. Mm -hmm.